chosen. Truth Seekers. Today I'd like to share with you a pretty cool synchronicity. I think it's best I describe this as an audio match keyword sync. I was commenting on Twitter while at the same time listening to the um, AJ podcast uh, for today. I made two tweets back to back. Uh, these tweets were made before I heard the repeating sync word. So the key word for this synchronicity is Stockholm Syndrome. Uh, for the initial tweet I said, looking at these election results, it is a bit of Stockholm Syndrome. No end to the submission to psychopathic nihilism dressed as public goodwill. Uh, this was made in response to this tweet. You accepted masks. You accepted school closures. You accepted social distancing. You accepted closed churches. Is there a point where everyone is collectively going to say enough? Or have we accepted defeat? This is made by at Zach Small. Right afterwards, I found a CNBC tweet uh, stating, Biden COVID advisor says U.S. lockdown of four to six weeks could control pandemic and revive economy. Uh, yes, this is your typical gaslighting nonsense. Um, and to that, I just listed some diseases. Stockholm syndrome, antisocial personality disorder. Uh, so I would say no more than two seconds after I typed this tweet, I heard the real big guy, not, not the fake big guy, also known as old O'Biden, Alex Jones says Stockholm Syndrome, like literally two seconds after I typed that second tweet. I will play for you the full context of his portion of discussion where he then said the word Stockholm Syndrome. It's a very good segment for a show. They set off door and give you a communist regime for a decade and let the communists exterminate your ass, enslave you, take all the men out that are strong, break everybody's will, and then they always put a bunch of tattling women in as minders to spy on everyone. That's how it's been since the days of Julius Caesar. The Romans have a manual. I never knew about it. I heard Thomas Sowell write about it decades ago. And I went and looked it up and found references to the manual of uh, sugar cane slave owners in the Caribbean 500 years ago. And they translated from Latin, the Roman management system. And they said in there, what we do is we bring in a bunch of slaves. Back then it would be German slaves 2000 years ago, but in the case of this, it was African slaves. And we get the biggest, strongest man and we beat him to death in front of the women and children and say, if you keep your men in line, we won't kill the rest of your men. And that's how feminism is set up where everybody knows Aunt Jemima's in the house, the men are out in the slave pit. That's what this is. This is Roman slave techniques, okay? And uh, that's just how this operates, ladies and gentlemen. And so women believe they're protecting everybody by going along with it because they have Stockholm Syndrome. Women are about eight times more likely psychologically, statistically, to go under Stockholm Syndrome because it's an adaptation to survive. And that's why governments that are corrupt always kill the men because they know they're not gonna submit. And Aunt Jemima's a nice, sweet lady. But if she caught any of the black men doing something they weren't supposed to, she'd go and have them hung. Well, that's your feminism now. They work for Bezos, they work for the billionaires, they work for the slave factories in China, and they are breaking this country right now, and they are coming in to take over. So when you see Black Lives Matter, and they all look like Aunt Jemima, they are folks, they are literally Marxist, Leninist, Satan worshipers who follow Mao Zedong and say they hate men's very existence, and the only good man is a castrated man. And their main sacrament is no families, for black people especially, and that black men have their testicles removed. I I'm not making it up. So yes, as you can see, it's a pretty interesting segment. Um, and very fascinating that I would be typing about Stockholm Syndrome and while listening to this podcast and just a second after I type the second tweet, he, he starts talking about Stockholm Syndrome. Of course, it's known that women tend to vote Democrat more than men. And it's safe to say at this point that the democratic form of government is now a totalitarian form of government, which is the opposite of the word democratic. People have commented before that in numerous forms of media, including film as well as cartoon television show, men have been made to look somewhat ridiculous and weak. Could this be for a form of symbolic castration? Could our political system use the female mind as an apparatus 
to encourage the entire population to submit to totalitarian government authority with men weakened is the welfare system which encourages women to have numerous children for benefits while not having a prime breadwinner husband to help rear those children is that all a part of the demasculating plan remove the black fathers have a generation of children reared only by mothers who will eventually grow up to vote democrat i'm not proposing that this view is an accurate description of our reality but i am stating that we should be willing to confront the most controversial positions with raw unemotional analysis if we ever hope to undo the patterns that result in the com nearly completely uninformed voting public that at this point it's very clear we have this is just something to think about peace